13 years ago, as an amateur photographer dreaming of going pro, I was feeling down and couldn't figure out why my photos weren't standing out and getting the attention I hoped for. I made the decision to stop comparing my work with that of other photographers and instead look at their work differently, attempting to spot what they did so that I could get better. In this video, I will share with you what I spotted and why pro photographers' photos look better than yours by sharing some great tips. Composition is the art of arranging elements in your photo to create an appealing and meaningful image. For photographers, the rule of thirds is key. Imagine your frame divided into a tic-tac-toe grid. Place your subject along those lines. When a subject looks right in a photo, it will be good to leave the space to the right of the subject. The same goes for the opposite. When a person walks to the right of the frame, space on the right will be better most of the time. When you have only one subject in your frame, putting it on a third line will be good for the composition. Rules, however, are made to be broken in photography and once you know what the rules are, you can do with it as you please. For example, if the model looks at you with her face and body square on, then putting her in the middle of the frame works. If she, however, looks to the left, it might change. Another key element to composition is leading lines. This is used to guide the viewer's eye and add depth to the composition. These lines can be physical elements or implied by arrangements of subjects. By strategically placing leading lines, you can direct attention create a sense of movement and enhance the overall impact of your image. Whether using straight, curved or converging lines, using this technique will help you to tell more engaging and impactful stories, inviting viewers to explore the image in a depth and more meaningful manner. Framing a subject is the last part of composition I want to point out to you and it involves creating a natural frame around the subject using elements within the scene. This technique adds depth and context to the composition, drawing attention to the subject and creating a sense of focus and intimacy. By positioning objects like archways, windows, branches or other elements in the foreground, you will guide the viewer's eye directly to the subject. Framing also serves as a storytelling tool, providing hints about the environment, setting or mood of the photograph, allowing the viewer to interpret an image with a broader context. Tip number two, creating a relaxed environment for your client during a photo shoot is a key tip for producing good photos. Having confidence in yourself and a clear plan for your shoot will help your client feel more at ease in front of the camera. Showing the back of your camera's LCD to your client is another effective way to help them relax. Seeing themselves on the LCD can work wonders. Guiding clients into certain poses can also give them the assurance that you know what you're doing and in return build their confidence. Making simple jokes, even if they're a bit cheesy, can help you put your client to ease. Just be careful not to overdo it. Buildings can be used for more than just leading lines or framing a subject. They can also be served as a reflector to bring soft light onto your subject. According to the law of light, the larger the light source, the softer the light. Buildings are massive and can create beautiful soft light. They are everywhere and you can use the light that bounces from them to light your subject. This technique can also help you shoot in harsh lighting conditions by filling in the shadows on the subject. Which brings us to tip number four. Shooting outdoors in the middle of the day can be a challenge as harsh sunlight can produce unflattering results. However, by utilizing shaded areas of buildings or trees, you can achieve a soft look in your photographs. Additionally, tip number three involving wall reflections can help you achieve incredible results. Number five is about window light, which relates to the importance of a large light source mentioned in tip number three. When indoors and searching for amazing light, windows are key. Windows can be big or small and create beautiful light. The larger the window, the softer the light will be. Make sure, however, to avoid using windows with direct sunlight as this can create harsh shadows. Also try using high windows or experiment with different light angles. 
Smaller windows will provide you with harsher shadows than larger windows, which is great for experimenting and achieving your desired look. The type of lens you use has a significant impact on the appearance of your photos. Have you ever wondered how photographers achieve those beautiful out of focus backgrounds? A lens aperture is the key to this effect. The aperture refers to how much the lens opens up to allow more or less light to enter. The larger the aperture, the more blurred the background will appear. For instance, an aperture of f2 will create a more blurred out background than f16. The focal length of your lens is another factor that affects the out of focus background. The closer the lens is to the subject and the further away the background, the more out of focus the background will be. This means that if you have a subject and you photograph it with a 24mm lens at f2.8 or a 135mm lens at f2.8, the 135mm lens will create a more out of focus background and give a more compressed look because it brings you closer to the subject. Number seven is one you have likely heard of but may not be using to its full potential. Number seven is all about the golden hour and blue hour and trust me when I say that there are many ways to take advantage of this. For those of you who are not familiar with the terms golden hour or blue hour, they refer to the last hour of light you see at sunset and the hour after sunset respectively. Both are known for their beautiful lighting. However, most cameras can only shoot up to 15 minutes after sunset before it gets dark. Higher end cameras with wide aperture lenses can shoot for much longer due to their low light capabilities. Shooting through the trees and playing with flare of the golden light can create a magical feel in your photos. Using a wide aperture lens as per tip number six can make your flare soft and dreamy. Shooting with the golden light from the side can also add an interesting look to your photos. To create a romantic look similar to the Hollywood movies, you can shoot directly into the light. Again, using a wide aperture will help achieve a soft look. You can also use your subject's head to hide the sun behind it, giving you control over the amount of sunlight in your photo. Shooting with golden light, especially when there are dark gray clouds or dark buildings in the background, can help you achieve a contrast yet soft look. During blue hour, soft romantic light fills the sky like pudding. Play around with angles to see where the light falls best on your subject. Make sure to practice with blue light before booking your first shoot because it fades quickly and you may run out of light. The last tip for today guys is editing and you can see in this before and after how important it is. To learn more about photo editing, click on this video to get 9 Lightroom tricks you've probably never heard of. See you in the next one. Cheers.